Hey everyone, welcome back to Sarah's Bean Kitchen. I hope you're doing well. Today's video is going to be a recipe test. We're gonna be trying out two different chicken style seitan recipes. If you're unfamiliar with what seitan is, it's sometimes known as wheat meat. It's just a high protein plant-based meat substitute made out of vital wheat gluten, which is the protein that you find in flour. It has been a long time since seitan recipes were in my regular rotation, but I'm really wanting to start making my own staples again. So I thought we would try out two popular chicken style recipes and that I document the process, let you know if one or both of them is worth your time and effort. So I'm gonna have both of the recipes linked down below if you wanna check them out. The first recipe we're trying out is the best vegan chicken recipe from the Full of Plants blog. And this is a seitan recipe that also calls for some young green jackfruit as well as tofu. And then the second recipe we're gonna be trying is called chickweed. It's from the Avocados and Ales blog, again, linked down below. And this is a seitan recipe that calls for some chickpeas and aquafaba, which is the cooking liquid from the chickpeas. So let's go over the best vegan chicken recipe first. This one calls for some tofu and some young green jackfruit in addition to the vital wheat gluten. You can find young green jackfruit. If you're in the States, a lot of Trader Joe's stores will stock it, but you can also check your local Asian market. Just make sure you're getting young green jackfruit, that the kind that comes in either uh, water or brine and not the sweet jackfruit that is yellow. So you drain the jackfruit, give it a nice rinse just to get off as much brine as possible. Then he recommends that you cut out the center pieces because they're a little bit tough and fibrous. I really liked that on the Full of Plants blog you can toggle to metric or imperial measurements. So I went by metric so that I could weigh everything to the gram and just be as precise as possible. So I made sure I had the right amount of jackfruit and then I added that to a blender along with some tofu. I used extra firm tofu. And again, I weighed that out to be precise. And then I added water and a chicken style vegan bouillon cube, which he said was fine as long as you reduced the rest of the salt in the recipe. You add in a few tablespoons of oil and then some onion powder. And then you blend all those ingredients together until you have a completely smooth mixture. So then I poured that mixture into my vital wheat gluten, which again, I had weighed out for precision. And stirred all the ingredients together. Now this was the part where I got a little bit concerned because I found my dough was very, very soft. And in the blog post, he actually says, don't worry if it's too soft, the gluten is gonna develop as you need it and you do need to knead it for a full 20-ish minutes. Um, I just felt like it was way too soft and he does have like a video on the, his blog post so that you can reference and make sure the texture is right. So I did end up adding about a tablespoon at a time, some extra vital wheat gluten, and I ended up adding about a half a cup altogether just to get a texture that looked like what he was showing in the video. So if you do choose to make this recipe, just be mindful that you might have to kind of tweak things a little bit, add a little bit more um, dry ingredients to get the right texture, which I think is fine. I think it's just a matter of different brands of vital wheat gluten having different protein content. So just be, be mindful of that. I switched to a dough hook and I let it knead for the full 20 minutes to develop the gluten. And then he instructs you to cut that dough in half and wrap them each into individual logs using aluminum foil. And then you submerge these in water in an instant pot and pressure cook them for about 30 minutes. So I used both of these chicken recipes in a couple different contexts. The best vegan chicken recipe that night I first made it, I used one of the little logs to make like barbecue pulled chicken or pork, I guess, sandwiches. And I feel like since the texture of this one is very soft and shreddable, it works really well in that context. I just shredded it by hand and I simmered it in a little bit of barbecue sauce, served it on some buns with some homemade coleslaw and some pickles, and it was really, really good. I will say the flavor of the jackfruit does come through just a little bit. It doesn't bother me too much. I really like jackfruit and I have cooked with it a fair number of times, but if it is a flavor that bothers you, uh, you might wanna skip out on this one. Okay, so let's move on to the second recipe, the chickweed from the avocados and ales blog. 
Actually, when I posted on Instagram stories that I was about to try making this, I got a lot of responses from people who had made the recipe and loved it. So I was very, very excited. So this recipe, instead of jackfruit and tofu to kind of cut the vital wheat gluten, we are using chickpeas, cooked chickpeas, as well as the cooking liquid from the chickpeas, also known as aquafaba. So I ended up using a little more than one can. Again, she does give a weight measurement so you can be ultra precise with this. So you add the chickpeas and the aquafaba to a blender. Again, a few tablespoons of oil, and I don't recommend skipping the oil if you're making seitan because it does keep it nice and moist and kind of just prevent it from being like dry and leathery and chewy, along with some white miso paste to make it nice and savory. There's a lot more seasoning in this recipe, so there's onion and garlic powder as well. Puree that mixture until it's completely smooth, and then you pour it into a big mixing bowl with your vital wheat gluten and stir it to form a dough. This dough right off the bat was much, much firmer than the first recipe. It was actually kind of like borderline dry. I did end up having to go in with my hands just to massage all of the uh, dry mixture into the dough. And then she recommends that you let it sit for about 15 minutes just to allow the gluten to fully hydrate. After that resting time, the dough did look a lot more even. Now this is the part where my mind was kind of blown because she has a specific method for developing the gluten in this recipe that I'd never seen anywhere before and I was a little skeptical about actually, but it ended up working so, so well and I don't think I'm ever gonna make seitan a different way ever again. So what you do, instead of kneading it by hand or even using the dough hook in your stand mixer like the previous recipe, you're gonna use a food processor. Some food processors come with a little plastic like dough blade and you can use that, but she also said that you could use a regular metal blade if that's all you have, which was my case. So you're gonna work in batches just to kind of be gentle on your food processor and to avoid burning it out. So I ended up cutting my dough ball into four pieces and you just throw your dough into the food processor and process it. And it goes through a couple different stages. First, it gets really crumbly and falls apart, and then you just keep going, and then gradually, as the dough gets knocked around your food processor and the gluten gets developed, um, it starts to come together into one ball. And this process happened over the course of like one minute of just running the food processor. So in total, it took four minutes, four or five minutes to knead all of the dough in different batches. Now compare that to most other seitan recipes, which will tell you to knead by hand or with a KitchenAid mixer for like 15 to 20 minutes, non-negotiable. And you can see the texture that is formed here. This is what is going to make your seitan nice and shreddable and like more similar to a chickeny texture. Okay, so after this, we kind of mash the dough back into one piece and wrap it with foil. And instead of submerging it in the water like in the first recipe. We're just filling up the bottom of the instant pot and we're gonna rest it on the rack and steam it for actually much longer than the first recipe, I think about two hours. It is worth saying too that I've only ever made seitan using an instant pot one other time. I used to always just fill like a stock pot with like an inch of water, put in a steaming rack, but it's kind of a hassle because you have to kind of keep an eye on it and make sure to keep adding water um, over the steaming time. And it usually takes like over an hour to steam seitan. So if you do have an, an instant pot or a pressure cooker, I highly, highly recommend using that method because it was just way less stressful. So after this recipe was cooked and I removed it and allowed it to cool a little bit, I was so excited to cut into it because it looks like like if you've ever bought one of the tofurkey roasts for one of the holidays, that's what it looked like. It had like a nice brown, not a crust, I don't wanna call it a crust, but like a skin. And I think this recipe is specifically marketed as something that you would shred, but I really wanted to try slicing it to see how it would hold up. And you guys, I think that this is gonna be what I make instead of buying like tofurkey slices from now on because it's sliced really, really beautifully. And the texture is super similar to tofurkey. I'm not gonna lie, when I first started to shred it, I was kind of like nibbling on it, just kind of standing right here at the counter and I just could not stop eating it. It tastes really good, like even on its own. The chickweed, for me at least, turned out much, much more firm. So I feel like I'd be more likely to use that recipe 
when I want the chicken to really hold its shape. So for example, I used it in a batch of chicken noodle soup. So I find a lot of store-bought vegan chicken substitutes. For example, the Gardein chicken strips, when you put them in a soup, they get really like mushy, the texture is weird. And this recipe held up really, really nicely. It did soften up a little bit when I was simmering it in the broth, but it still held its shape. It had a nice bite to it. I also ended up making vegan chicken salad for sandwiches out of this recipe. They just chopped it up. I added mayo, uh, mustard, some relish, some celery, onion, etc. And again, since this is something that you typically make one batch of and then it will sit overnight in your fridge or maybe two nights, um, this really held up its shape well. Whereas when I've done that with Gardein, it kind of, again, gets a little slimy and mushy. So I feel like both recipes were good, but I would use them probably for different applications, just depending on whether you want something that's a little bit more tender and shreddable for like pulled barbecue sandwiches or uh, shredded chicken enchiladas or something like that. Eric is gonna give his uh, opinion of the chickweed. So Sarah made this little chickweed salad. It's very, very chickeny. The texture is very shreddy and proteiny and really, really good. Obviously it's proteiny, it's like all protein, right? It's really meat-like, it's good. I mean, I wanna try it like this though. Mm. You can convince anyone that's chicken salad. <laughs> Really? Mm hmm You think so? Mm hmm I feel like it's just slightly chewier than chicken. Yeah, it's been a long time since I had chicken, but I mean, there's no downside to it. It's very, very good. So how would you say this stacks up to the other, the jackfruit chicken? Um, they're different because the jackfruit is much softer and a little like more moist maybe. This has a more thicker, chewier texture. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I like them both though. What about this versus soy curls? Mm. This is more meat-like than soy too? curls. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I still love soy curls though. But mm -hmm. this is more of like a mock meat, not just a, a substitute like soy curls. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm. Want to bite? <laughs> I really want it in enchiladas. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do with the rest of it. I'm finally getting around to tasting this vegan chicken salad on camera. As you can see, Eric has eaten a lot of it already. Mmm! I think the texture is definitely like a little bit more... Like there's a springy kind of texture to seitan that is not like chicken. I think it is way more convincing in texture than like Gardein uh, strips or soy curls. It's a little bit sweet. I think the sweet flavor is coming from the miso paste. We made the barbecue uh, sandwiches out of the jackfruit seitan, but I've actually not tried it on its own. So we're going to do that live right now. This one shreds way more easily than the, um, the chickweed, just because it has a much more tender texture. It really does look more realistic than the chickweed too. Like that is a little uncanny actually. I just feel like the, the flavor of the jackfruit comes through more than I would like. Um, you know, I love jackfruit. I love cooking with jackfruit. I have a couple of recipes on the channel featuring jackfruit. And what I always do is boil it for a substantial length of time in like vegan chicken broth just to remove the flavor of the brine and to make it way more neutral. I feel like that might be a good call in this situation. I just really taste it and it's preventing my brain from processing it as chicken. I will say though, when I cooked it in the barbecue sauce, all those flavors did for the most part mask the jackfruit flavor. So if you're gonna add this to something super saucy or something that has a lot of spices in it, you might be fine. 
here's the two side by side. This one here is the chickweed. This one is the best vegan chicken. This one, again, it has like the texture of like a log of cold cuts. The chickweed has a much more savory, kind of chickeny flavor, but it has a lot more seasoning in it. I feel like if you put the same amount of seasoning, like the miso paste, onion and garlic powder in the jackfruit recipe, it might equalize it a little more. It tastes like tofurkey, but you know how tofurkey has like a very, very it has a very unique flavor, mm -hmm. and it tastes like tofurkey, nothing else tastes like it? Yeah, like a little processed. Yes, it doesn't have that. It's more mild, mm -hmm. you know, which is why I liked it in the chicken salad. Yeah. It's really, really good. The texture is spot on. Also, can you just note how much grayer mm -hmm. th this one is than the chickweed? This one's a little smooshy. Yeah, it's soft. I'm scared to eat this one. <laughs> it tastes more like a roast. Like there are herbs in it. It does? Mildly, but it also tastes, I don't know, it tastes a little like blah. It tastes gray. Okay. Does that make sense? Do you know what jackfruit tastes like on its own? I don't think so. Okay. So Because that's what's coming through for me. This tastes like how the chickweed tasted or felt texturally in the soup. Mm, after it had been after it had simmered. Been moistened mm -hmm. for a long time. Yeah. I mean, it's not bad by any means. It's just not as chickeny as this one. How did you like it in the sam the barbecue sandwiches? I loved it in the barbecue sandwiches. Did you taste the no. weird flavor? No, okay. not okay. at all. Okay, good. Yeah, the chickweed is tastier, plain, but in context of a meal, they're both good. So just to kind of wrap the recipe test up, I think you can tell which one was my favorite. The chickweed is definitely going to be going into my regular rotation. I'm going to try to find as many ways to kind of customize it with different spices um, to try to make like pepperoni, uh, bologna, etc. And I'll probably end up making like a vegan hot dog recipe using this recipe as an outline. And then the other recipe, the best vegan chicken, I really did like it. I just don't feel as enthusiastic about it. Let's put it at that. So that is it for this recipe test. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please do let me know if you've tried either of these recipes, what you thought about them. Um, let me know if there's any other recipes that you'd like me to test out or pit against each other, just so that you know whether they're worth your time and effort and money, because that is what I'm here for. And I always love a good challenge. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you again very soon.